Alright boys and girls, for the final step of this project is going to be Plasti Dip and Painting. So the, for the Plasti Dipping stage, we're just going to need our can of Plasti Dip, um, a little bit of naphtha to use as a thinner. If you have a brand new fresh can of uh, Plasti Dip, sometimes you don't have to use the, the thinner, but um, yeah, the thinner makes it uh, a bit easier to apply and it actually goes a little easier on the brushes. The brushes don't wear out as fast. So um, I kind of eyeball it just as far as how thick the Plasti Dip seems to be to how much uh, naphtha I put in. Um, so you can experiment a little bit. Some people do 50-50, some people do like, I usually do like 20-80. Um, but my cans of Plasti Dip are usually fresh and recently opened. So yeah, so I just poured it into my metal bowl that we actually used to make the boss and I'm going to stir it with uh, the paintbrush I'm going to be using, then I'm just going to take the bowl over there and uh, start painting. So, let's get started. Okay, so I applied my first layer of Plasti Dip, and the first thing I did was I took uh, a whole bunch of Plasti Dip and I just globbed it into these big main like board grooves. And so that was the first thing, and then I spread kind of the excess off just along the sides, and then I did that for all the board grooves. And then um, after that I did all these were the were the craft foam and the the main project meet up I just kinda dabbed along there so that got a nice thick coating in like all the joints and then after that I did a thin coating on top of the craft foam and then I just I just did a thin coating um, making sure to get into the grooves as much as possible um, and this your brush strokes are gonna disappear a little bit, um, but there there's a good chance some of them might remain. So I tried to do all my brush strokes in a pattern that would make sense if they show through onto the project. So for here, I did back and forth brush strokes. For the center ring, I did rounded circle, and for the boards, I went up and down as much as I could. Um, some areas, like right over here, that was kind of hard to do. So I kind of just had to, you know, hope hope for the best. But anyway. Um, Plasti Dip into these little crevices is important because if you didn't um, glue these properly that's going to start peeling up and you want that to happen before you invest a whole bunch of time into the project where you can still possibly fix it. Yeah, oh and then, then another little thing. Um, when you're doing the edges, I'm going to do the front, the back, and the, the edges a little bit um, separate from each other. But you want to have some overlap so you don't have like you know, a 90 degree cutoff, and then you have two pieces of Plasti Dip meeting where maybe they're not bonded well. So there's like a seam where they can come apart. So right here we have all the overlap. So that's gonna be, it, it's gonna layer the, um, the Plasti Dip, Plasti Dip layers together. Um, I am not eloquent with words, sorry. Okay, so I Plasti Dip my shield. Um, I did, I want to say, maybe seven or eight coats on the front and like a good five coats on the back. Um, and then the 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 rim I did, um, I tried to do as much overlap with the front and the back coats as possible. And then I gave the rim um, its own couple, two or three coats. So the thickest portions um, of Plasti Dip are the Boss. These craft strips um, that are going to be the metal banding on the shield, and then the outside rim, which is also going to be metal banding, and that's because those are going to be taking the most contacts. Oh, excuse me. All right, um, and then I'm just going to do a base coat of burnt umber on the wood planking, and a metallic gunmetal gray for the metal banding, and then after that I'm going to do some dry, dry brushing. Okay, so we have the wooden shield. Um, it's painted a nice, um, I think this is, let's see, burnt umber. And that, that gave it a really nice dark wood tone that I really like. Um, so anyway, now we're going to take um, nutmeg brown. And we're going to use a really cheap, kind of, it has to be a bigger brush to do dry brushing because if you see the bristles they're they're really ragged and um, yeah so that's going to give us a nice effect with the dry brushing so anyway so we're going to take that and um, just dry brush going with the grain and then when you're dry brushing use 
less paint as opposed to more because you can always add more but it's really hard to take it off then you have to you know repaint over it, and then you got layers of paint which don't look good and things like that so just trust me go with less as opposed to more all right and then i just um i taped this up and just because you have um things taped up doesn't mean you should just go crazy and like paint over it you know just try and avoid painting on the tape as much as possible all right, so here we have the finished dry brushing, and as you can tell, the um, I think the hazelnut is just a little bit lighter than the um, burnt umber, uh, so it gives a really nice effect. And next, I'm going to do a black wash over the um, wood wood. Okay, so the next step, I'm, or the final step I'm going to do anyway, is uh, I'm going to take some watered down paint I have in this mug. It's black paint, and I'm just going to be doing a, a dark wash on portions of the wood grain to kind of give it an aged and dirty uh, look. And it also kind of disguises where, say, your, you know, the black paint and the brown paint kind of overlapped and parts are touching that shouldn't be, you know, or metal banding is brown and the wood is either black or silver if you decided to go with a, a silver for the metal. Right, and as you can see that looks really good when you do this you can either do a dry brush or a, a dry rag to wipe this off or a wet rag depending on how much dirt and grime you want to achieve okay so this is the finished shield back I just left plain because it's the back. Okay, so this is actually the third shield I've ever made. And this would be the second shield. And this is same design, just a lot simpler. Um, less details added in. And then the first shield I ever made was literally a sled that had blue camp pad foam duct taped to it. So, I mean, I'm, like, this This is pretty nice, I have to say. Um, and I think anyone can make this. I made, I made this with, I think, no power tools, because my son was sleeping at the time. Um, like, the night I made it. And I just plastic dipped it, and, like, that whole texture was just spray paint from a can. Um, but, yeah, like, this I just used, same thing, I used a soldering iron, but other than that, um, soldering iron, heat gun, that's maybe... $40 worth of uh, tools if you wanted to make something like this. But yeah, it's super easy. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, yeah, so go out and make one. They're pretty nice.